VO2 max. This is the maximum amount of oxygen the body can consume at a single moment of time. It is measured in milliliters per kilogram, so it's compared to your body weight. And generally speaking, this is a number that's largely genetic. So you can improve your VO2 max, and it's a great way to test if, you, if you're improving yourself. However, not your, peak, your peak maximum is, can be genetic. I did my undergraduate in sports science, so I know a fairly decent amount on this area, but not as much as the guys we're about to go see. And the reason I want to go get it tested for reals is because I started to see some big numbers on my Garmin being given out, and I'm not so, not so sure that they were correct. So let's go there now and test it out. So Garmin likes to predict your VO2 max, and on my watch it reckoned I was at 61 before I had my big crash in July. So I was out for about eight weeks then, so not good for your fitness levels really. Um, but as I've come back, I've been back for about five weeks now, and my watch reckons I'm coming back to form, so it reckons I'm back up to 60. I don't quite believe it, and that seems quite high for me. So today we're going to the Surrey Sports Park to put that to the test. And joining me, I have two guinea pigs, I meant family members right here, coming to the sports park with me to test it out and we're going to find out what it's all about. So here we are at the Surrey Sports Park going in and we're going to be doing two tests today. So the first one is going to be some lactate testing, so testing when our lactate levels start to build and go past the point of no return. And the second test is the VO2 max test, which also tests substrate um, utilization as well. So we'll be knowing when we're using fats, when we're using carbohydrates. So here we go with the first test. They basically take your height, take your weight, and then it's time to get the mask fitted. They will also do a resting lactate level whilst you're here and get the heart rate monitor on. After this, you are ready for your submaximal test. So for me, I started at 100 watts and I went up in 25 watt increments every four minutes. At the point of every four minutes, they would take a lactate level, so they would prick your finger and you would have a look at your lactate levels. So the test finished when you got to four millimoles per litre in lactate. And for me, the test ended at 275 watts. You definitely don't get to your limit here, but it's a good test of most of the data that you're going to get. So this is the test where you're also going to be finding out your substrate utilisation, such as when you're using fats and when you start to use carbohydrates more. After a break, it is then time for test number two, and this is the VO2 max test. So they're going to get you to your limit, and they start off at three minutes easy. So for me, we started at 100 watts, and then every minute we went up by 20 watts. I fit, hit failure at 430 watts. So let's have a look at the data, and we'll go from there. How was that, buddy? That was hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was fun. We are done. Yeah. Took us about four hours all in, and uh, it was cool. So very intense on the last one. You just go into your limit, but I look forward to seeing the data. That should be back in about four or five days, and I'll get back to you then. So we're back in the apartment. We've got the results back, and it's safe to say they're not the most flattering. But I don't think I was expecting too much either from the power numbers that I produced. As you can see here. I'll put it up big on the screen. My VO2 max is 50.8. So call it 51 really. So 50.8 for my VO2 max. And that is well below what Garmin's predicting. Garmin's predicting me at 60 at the moment. And that is nine milliliters per kilogram per minute more than what the actual test has shown. So some over prediction from Garmin there. If you know of any reason why, feel free to put them in the comments below and feel free to give me some suggestions because I can't really think of why that is. So first here we get to the lactate threshold test and here you can see LT1 is the point where, your lact where you can build lactate quite comfortably and it will just sustain the level. So generally your lactate levels will remain really low below LT1 which for me is 207 watts. So I can stay below 207 watts and remain pretty comfortable without really building that much lactate. Then we get to LT2, which is your lactate threshold. And for me here, it is 253 watts. So my FTP is just above that because you can build more lactate than you can on your lactate threshold, which we'll go into in a moment. But 
that LT2 is the point where you start to exponentially build lactate and it gets tougher and tougher and tougher to keep working hard. So if I wanted to do like a tempo ride, I would do it around that 240, 250 watts mark to try and stay just below that four millimoles of lactate. If you compare this to some of my time trials, it kind of seems about right. So here I've got my Reading 25 mile time trial, which is my fastest 25 miler I've done. And here I averaged 265 watts. So a little bit above, but that does account for the lactate buildup that you can go above your FTP there. Then if we come to Farnham time trial here, it's a much shorter race, so it's only a 10 miler, 22 minutes and 40 seconds, and I averaged 283 watts. So because it's a shorter time, I could spend more time above that lactate threshold and push more watts. And then if I come to this final one, Newbury time trial, flatter, so I went even faster, 22 minutes, 16 seconds, 283 watts. So you can go well above that on your FTP, but the lactate levels can predetermine your, your power outputs for those numbers. And I think the lactate levels do show where these numbers are at. After this, we get to a substrate utilization. So what they're measuring here via indirect metabolic testing or through the gases that are being exchanged, they can tell if you're oxidizing fats for energy or carbohydrates for energy. Now you can see my graph here and it doesn't look great. So I'm not really using fats above 100 watts and as carbohydrates kind of becomes the predominant source. So ideally, I've got this little clip here where I draw on and you can see basically where the line should be roughly. Um, this is what a professional athlete might look a bit more like. Um, it's just a rough estimate. It's just to show what it should look like. But really, that's where I should be too if I'm training this area. I did query into this and here is the response that I've got. I said, why? what are some of the reasons that I might be using more carbohydrates and as you can see from here this I'll pour, you can pause the screen if you want to but mainly it could be to do with the food that I had before the training so I know that this morning I had porridge and the night before I had a pasta based meal so very carbohydrate heavy and because the carbohydrates were available that is probably what my body was aiming to utilize however I am going to look to improve this in the future so I can use more fats than I do carbohydrates at these lower end numbers. Then finally here, we have got my training zones. And you can see here that my zone two is from 107 to 135 beats a minute. Usually I've been training at 135, because, or 130, sorry, because that's what was recommended by Garmin. But I'm actually gonna bring that down to 120. So that puts me more in the middle of zone two. So hopefully that should improve my fat utilization a lot more. I'm also gonna spend the time in zone two. I might do some of my rides fasted because I'm always taking carbohydrates with me. So I think my body's well trained for carbohydrates, but not for utilizing fats. And I will try and have a more fat based meal rather than a carbohydrate based meal the night before. So I can really start to utilize those fats and see if my power numbers start to increase at 120 beats a minute. So this has been VO2 max testing with Cycling Unboxed. Hopefully this gives you an insight into some of my measly numbers. But let me know what you think. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below and I look forward to seeing you in a future video.